Does playing with clay remind you of your childhood? Me too. I remember the salt, flour, and water mixture my mom used to make. You know, there's something really therapeutic about just sitting down with a lump of clay and molding it into exactly what you want it to be. And in case you haven't read a craft magazine in the past 10 years, there's a wonderful thing called polymer clay, which makes it perfectly fine for grown-ups to play with clay. That's good times. That's exactly what we're going to do today. Polymer play, next. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jackie Guerra. Welcome to my studio. This is DIY Jewelry Making. We'll be polymer playing for the next half hour. Today's projects will include a Millefiori choker and every woman's favorite shoes. Well, shoe earrings to be exact. If you miss anything on the show, all the instructions will be on our website at DIYNetwork.com. My first guest is no stranger to the wonderful world of polymer clay. She actually teaches classes all over the country and has her own online gallery. Meet Maria del Pinto. Hi, Maria. Hi, Jackie. You have beautiful, beautiful things. Oh, thank you. And you do all this great stuff with the polymer clay. I know that when I've used polymer clay, the pasta machine is brilliant. Why don't you explain to everybody, though, why polymer clay artists always tend to use the pasta machine? The purpose of the machine is it conditions the clay quicker and gives you more even sheets of clay to work with so that you can do intricate designs. It takes all the little bubbles out it takes and them all, all of out. that. Really cool. All right, so you're going to actually walk us through how to make some of these beautiful enamel beads, right? Right. Using the polymer clay. So gorgeous. Yeah, we're going to start with... Um, two triangles of the same of red and orange and then we're going to um, yeah, you see how we offset them we're going to go ahead and put them together and then after we've trimmed them we're going to put them through the pasta machine on the thickest setting and once you use your pasta machine for the clay you never want to use it for food that's right <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and put it through once and then what we're going to do is we're going to match color to color it's really important to do that so that you will get the good gradiated color. And we're going to do this 20 to 30 times till we come up with this. Okay. And then once you get to this, this has been trimmed just to show how the color is gradiated. We're going to go ahead, this is what your sheet will look like. You're going to fold it in half. And this time you're going to put the open end first. And we're going to put it through this thickest setting of the pasta machine. Roll it through. We're going to do it through the third setting. So you're just you're changing the settings so that as you get the color that you like, you can also make it thinner and longer. Exactly. Okay. And it's going to keep going through until we end up with this. Beautiful. And then we're going to just roll this up really tightly and then trim off the ends and then we're going to end up with this cane. Cane? Looks like a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to take a sheet of yellow clay <clears throat> at the number two setting and wrap it around the cane. And then we're going to start now to reduce. Now it's a reduce. corn dog. Exactly. <laughs> okay. And we're going to reduce it. Now this is kind of, you're going to pinch the edges. And the reason you do this is so you don't lose a lot of And cut. by reducing, you just mean you're going to make it longer and thinner. Correct. You've done this before. Once or twice. Okay, <laughs> and so we're just going to reduce it. And we're going to use our whole hand. And what that does is it allows it to slowly move and stretch move and stretch in that way you don't lose any right. of the Right, and you want to keep the same amount of pressure so that your cane is even or corn dog, whatever you prefer. Exactly. And then we're going to, once we get it down to 20 inches, we're going to cut it into five equal pieces and from there we're going to flatten it and once we flatten it we're going to put it around a orange. Once you get it down to 20 inches you cut it into five equal pieces and you're going to end up with something that looks like this, right? Five of Correct. these. Correct. And then we're going to flatten them with the rod and it's going to look like this and we're going to wrap them around the orange snake till it looks like a flower petal. And as you start to wrap the different colors you're building your pattern. Exactly. Okay. And then we're going to once again reduce it till we get it down to this size. So isn't it's amazing that it starts off you know this flat sheet and it ends up so cute with a little detail. Absolutely. The next one is going to be the leaf cane. Yeah, and this one's, once again, same Skinner blend, and we're going this time with the yellow and the green. We're going to cut two cuts into it and insert some green, and then we're going to um, offset a cut. It's offset on the center, 
and then we're going to insert the green, the orange, the yellow, etc. So when you're working with polymer clay, and especially when you're creating an intricate design like Maria uses, you really want to think in terms of layering, mm -hmm. rolling, pressure, exactly. building, layer, roll, build, layer, roll, right? Exactly. Okay. And we're going to, now, you're going to put the two pieces together, however, to make it into a leaf cane, we're going to flip it. And that's how you get your leaf. And then we're going to wrap a green sheet around it, and you're going to make sure to leave the orange showing. And the reason being is you're going to end up with a cane this big, and you're going to want to reduce it down, and by having this orange on it, you can make sure you're reducing it correctly. So you can go from this down to the leaf cane down this And then side. that way you just always know where the center of your project is. Correct. Okay. And then once you get it this small, you're just going to pinch the edge, and that's going to give you the leaf shape. Isn't that incredible? And now we're going to do the bead. Okay. So take this is all in preparation for creating the actual bead. Correct. Let's go. We're going to take um, a base yellow bead. We're going to apply. Oh, this is simple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we're going to sli slice them very thinly with the blade, and we're going to place them on to. So what you've done is you've just chopped down this. Correct. So great. And then we're just going to add, we'll add the flowers. So we'll you add, add the little petals and the leaves, and then it becomes this? Exactly. Perfect. And once that's in, you're going to put it in your hands, and you're going to use the base of your hands to smooth it out. And the warmth of your hands makes it a little more pliable. It's a little mm -hmm. more pliable. And then we're going to put it in plexiglass. And the reason for this is plexiglass performs a suction, so you can control the shape of your bead. And then once you get it to the size you want, it looks like this, and then you keep placing your petals, right? Exactly. So now we're going to take the bead, and we're going to add a few more petals just to give it dimension. And you take the piece in, you're going to take your tool, and form it in, and then just keep adding them till you have a good amount, and then it'll end up like this. It's so great. And then we'll just bake them, and you come out with this beautiful lay. Now you pierce it before you bake, right? Correct. Really important. Don't forget to pierce before you bake. Then you pierce it, you bake it at? 275 per quarter inch thickness. Okay. And then, once you have your beautiful beads and they come out of the oven, you can put them together and make something as Phenomenal is this! Look at this. This is just memory wire and crystals, right? Yes. You're an artist. Thank you, Jane. Thank, Thank you, you, Maria. Later, we'll create Cinderella's favorite accessory, but next, we'll put the basics of polymer clay to good use on the Millefiori Choker when DIY jewelry making returns. Welcome back. This is DIY Jewelry Making, and we are playing with polymer clay today in a big way. My next guest began her artistic career as an oil painter, but she soon fell in love with polymer clay. Meet Christine Brashers. Hi, Christine. Hi, Jackie. Now, you have amazing things to show us today, but we are specifically going to be making a Mille Fiore choker, right? Mille Fiore. <laughs> Correct. Is that Italian? Yes, it is. What does it mean? It means a thousand flowers. The Italian glass bead makers are very famous for making glass beads using this process. But we're not going to make a thousand flowers, literally. No. But we're going to use that process to create this beautiful necklace. Look at the detail on that. So gorgeous, Christine. So this is just polymer clay, crystals, and seed beads. That's all. You're going to show us how to make that kind of detail? Absolutely. Let the magic right. begin, my friend. Okay. <laughs> well, I start off with two colors for petals and one color for outline and background. Condition the clay. And then I make what's called a Skinner blend. That's two colors put together, run through the pasta machine about 15 times to create one gradiated sheet. Okay. So whatever your combination is, the goal is two contrasting colors, and then you create that color variation. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Thank you. Then the next step is to take this sheet and instead of running it through this way like we would for a Skinner blend, I'm going to run it through this way, which will lengthen this piece of clay. So if we were going to make beads versus a flat surface, then we would put it in widthwise versus lengthwise. Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to fan fold this longer sheet. Uh-huh. Folding it back and forth. Look at that. And this is the end product. Wow, look at the color. That is really cool. All right. Then I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to cut down through the center of this piece of clay. And this is because you're creating the petals at this Ye point, right? That's okay. right. And then I'm going to insert a piece of this d blue clay as a line. I'm going to cut it twice more. And the blue clay is your contrast color. That's correct. Okay. And this is what I end up with. Then I'm going to roll it a little bit to make it a little more round and wrap a sheet so around So Christine, it. you just took the blue and put it in between these slices and then wrapped it and then you're going to roll it? Yes. Show me how you roll. Okay. Just take that piece of clay and I'm going to roll it a little bit, but okay. as I'm rolling it, I'm also going to pinch it because my goal is to make a petal shaped piece. Because once you roll it and pinch it, then you end up with this? That's correct. That's this is very cool. And I also made a center using a jelly roll technique. I love jelly rolls, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> this is the edible kind. Put that in the center and assemble <coughs> these pieces around to create a flower. And this is the end product. Gorgeous. Look at that. Yahoo! And then we just slice this up? Slice put it in the oven? Well, you need to slice mm. three thin slices and put them on a backing of clay. Okay. And you need to... And that's what this is. That's correct. Okay. And what you'll do is trim away the backing. and two thick slices and then you'll use your hole tool to put a hole through the length of the bead. And whenever you work with polymer clay, you can't say this enough, pierce before you bake. Pierce before you bake. Don't <laughs> bake and pierce, that's a nightmare. And you right. bake it at? 275 degrees. For about? For about 20 minutes. For about 20 minutes and then it comes out and you can build this beautiful, beautiful necklace and you can see that in this particular design, Christine, you use three thinner flowers yes, and two thicker flowers to anchor it, and you just pierce the sides because those are the ones that were on the backing. Right. Unbelievable. You have beautiful things. Thank you. Millefiori beauty. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Christine. <gasps> All right. Coming up, how many pairs of shoes can one woman have? My next guest thinks there's no limit, especially when they're miniature shoes created from polymer clay. Welcome back, I'm Jackie Guerra. We've been learning just how versatile and fun it is to work with polymer clay. You know, jewelry making can really be fun when you incorporate something you love into the design. My next guest is here to share her technique for polymer clay shoes. Meet Deborah Anderson. Hi, Hi Deborah. Hi, Jackie. Okay, I love the idea of making your own shoes, but polymer clay shoes? Well, I've been making leather shoes for about 30 years now, so I started working with polymer clay about 10 years, and I wanted to try shoes. But we're going to make little teeny tiny shoes, right? Yes, we're, gonna we're going to make a pair of uh, tiny shoe earrings. I am going to show how to make them in a bigger scale so that viewers can see. Okay. Well, you have some beautiful things here, some really great different different styles of your earrings and the different shoes. And if you're going to make shoes, you might as well have earrings that are shoes too. That's a good idea. Thank you. Now, 
you're, we're going to make these. Yes. So you're going to walk us through the steps. Right. But this size doesn't turn into. No, it doesn't. I used a stylus mat with a small design for this pair, but for the big pair, I'm going to use this stylus mat. Okay. So the first thing I do is I conditioned my lavender polymer clay, and I'm using Fimo today. And I rolled it in a uh, medium setting of the pasta machine. And I'm going to ink up my stylus mat 